If you're looking to create a finished edge on your garment, on some clothing that you're making, on a sewing project, and you want it to last, I definitely recommend getting a serger. And I have the Brother 1034D. It's a really basic serger. It's really cost effective for what it is. And I'm gonna walk you through all of the basics about it today and see if a serger is right for you. So how do you know if a serger is right for you? Where do you start? How do you even serge an edge? And what do you do if all of your stitches are wonky and kind of getting just tangled up and not finished like you want them to? I'm gonna answer all of these questions in today's beginner serger's guide. I have had my serger for a couple years and I'm so glad I finally decided to get one. Previously, I would just use pinking shears, which are basically zigzag scissors, and I would just cut the edges this way or use the zigzag stitch on my regular sewing machine to finish the edges. A serger is a much more efficient and professional edge and it will last much longer especially when you're sewing clothes, you want them to last, you want them to wear well, and you want them to have that professional finish because you're gonna be wearing these items and washing them and putting them to use. That's why I definitely recommend adding a serger to your sewing machine lineup if you're making a lot of clothes. With that said, if you're not ready to invest in a serger or it's just not the right time, I definitely recommend looking into French seams. This creates just a beautiful finish on the inside of your garment. So look at the French seam tutorial on our channel if that is what you're looking for. There are so many things that this machine can do, so many more than I even use it for, but today's video I'm just going to talk about the basics. So if you have any specific tips, special ways you like to use your serger, I would love to hear them and you can comment those below. Okay, so let's talk about this machine. This is the Brother 1034D. It's a great investment. If you're just sewing clothing and lighter weight items, this is a great machine. So I always recommend looking on Facebook Marketplace or Mercari, eBay, asking around to a friend, asking if you can borrow one. I did that for a while and using it after a few times, I knew I needed a serger. We'll walk through threading in just a second, but first, just these spools of, of thread are different than your average sewing machine thread. This thread has so much more on the spool than an average sewing machine thread, and so you don't have to replace them all the time, which is a huge benefit, especially when you see what it's like to thread this thing. When you are shopping for thread, just make sure it's for a serger or an overlock machine and it's this tall spool. The thing about this is, is you can change out the colors every time you sew, depending on what you're sewing. I just keep mine this like neutral off-white color. It's like a cream and I think that's fine for the inside of my garments. Um, if you'd like to match them to your garments, a great way to do that is just to change this spool on the end. This is the one that's going to thread through the needle. And you can also change this one as well to a similar color. And this, these are the colors that are actually gonna show. So if you just wanna change out the colors that are gonna show, you could do that with these two spools but it's totally personal preference depending on kind of the end goal of your garment. Maybe if you're going to sell clothing, I think it'd be really wise to change out the colors, but for home sewing, I feel like just keeping it like this is really convenient and it works well for me. This is probably the most important part of the entire process. If the machine is not threaded correctly, it's just not gonna work correctly and you're gonna get frustrated and wonder why did you get this machine? So pay attention. This is threading for this machine only. I believe that every machine is different. That's why it comes with a user manual. So make sure to look that up if you have a different machine than mine. To start threading your machine, you wanna make sure you have four spools of this larger thread installed into the machine. You can pull up the T-bar and make sure that your spools are full and I change mine out here. 
So I'm going to take all of the threads and weave them up through the back holes of the T-bar. And to first thread the machine, you're going to go from the green to the blue to the pink to the yellow. So you're going to start with the green one and you're going to take the thread that's threaded up through the back of the T-bar and then pull it through this tension rod right here and make sure it snaps. Then you're going to pull this arrow over to the right and pull the thread down through this hole. Then you're going to follow the green lines and dots to thread the machine. So you're going to go down through this little hook and then under the where the green dot is and then over to the seven which is this other hook making sure it's right behind here. And then you can also remove the presser foot to make all of the threading easier. And you're going to take your tweezers that come with your machine and make sure that the thread is snipped off at the end to make it sharp enough to go through this hole. And it kind of takes a little bit to thread it through, but you can pull it through the back of the machine and always make sure that your threads don't have any knots or anything and that they're going to the back of the machine. Now go to the blue, which is your second spool, and you're going to thread it through the same exact way as the green one to start. And then you're going to follow the blue lines and the blue dots going under both of these little hooks behind the hook here, which is number eight. And then you can pull your lever on the side until you see this arrowed section and you can pull it out towards the right. Now kind of create some tension with the thread in your hands and weave the thread behind this little section right here and push the arrow back in and then using your tweezers you can thread through to the back and pull it to the back making sure there's no knots or anything now you can close the door right here and start on your pink and you're just going to follow it down the same way and then follow the number four up to where it says five all the way around down through back behind this lever here and then to the right needle you're going to pull it through and making sure all of your threads are to the back of the machine for the last one the yellow you just want to pull it down the same exact way and then follow the arrows and then you're going to thread it through the left needle then you're going to put your presser foot back on there's a little lever behind that will snap it in place and you can pull this wheel towards you and it will chain the stitches we've threaded the machine and now we're going to talk about the basics um, I'm just going to walk you through kind of the basics of what it's like to serge on a machine like this. And to start, you want to turn this handle over here. You always want to make sure that you're turning the wheel towards you and not away from you. So you're going to go forwards and never backwards on a serger. You can chain stitch a few times by spinning this wheel and you want to make sure you're just starting the process of creating this chain with the thread and it's going to create this tail. So you have this tail and then you're going to lift up the presser foot and slide your fabric underneath. So before this you've already sewn the side seams of your fabric and this is going to finish it off. So slide it under your fabric under the presser foot and make sure if you are using the knife that the side edge that you want to be cut off is under this knife. So once it is, your presser foot is back down, you have your tail on the edge and your fabric underneath the presser foot, you're going to slowly with the presser foot, use your foot to add pressure to the foot. As far as you press this on your foot is how fast the machine is gonna go and it can go really fast. So to start out, we're actually gonna come down here and we're gonna move the knife to 
it's off position. This is going to lower the knife and remove that part of the surging process. And this is great for practicing. It's great for when you're doing combining pieces together because you don't want to cut off fabric by accident, which I have totally done and it is such a headache. So learn from me, practice a lot with the knife down. So you're going to press the presser foot with your foot and it's going to go pretty fast, but you're going to just keep it under control and not go too fast to start with. And you're going to see how the machine is just taking over and adding this chain and this thread to your fabric. And it kind of looks like magic and it's amazing. So you're going to keep going until you reach your end point, And then you're going to keep sewing off the edge until you have a couple inches left of your chain thread and you want to leave a tail. So you're going to cut it right here in the middle and then you surged this first edge of your fabric. To finish this off, you're going to take a darning needle. There are a few ways to do this, but I'm going to show you the simple way that I do it. You're going to take this darning needle and put it under your chain stitch here. Then you're going to thread the remaining tail through the eye of the needle and pull it through this chain. This is going to weave it back into the chain so it doesn't unravel. Alternatively, you can tie a knot instead, but this is going to finish that edge off really nicely. Something that I love to do with my machine and that has come in handy a lot is to take a photo of all of my settings on my machine because once they get messed up, it's going to be frustrating to get back to that place where it was creating that perfect surged edge. So I just like to keep a notepad handy or just a photo on my phone of the settings of the tensions over here and all the settings on the side. These are my current settings. They're probably how it came in the box and I just haven't changed them because I use thinner woven fabrics and I've found that it works great for me. Like I said earlier, the knife position is really important, especially if you're just starting out. So the knife is just a great aspect of the serger. I mean, it's a huge draw of why you would want a serger. It's cutting off that excess seam allowance, or if you have an uneven seam, it's going to even it out and just create that perfect edge. And it's amazing. It's kind of addicting to watch and practice with. So I totally recommend practicing a lot, getting used to watching how that knife works, how it's cutting off the extra fabric and where it's cutting. Once you've kind of dialed in on where it's going to cut exactly, you won't have those mistakes quite as often. And another tip is always make sure that extra fabric is flat underneath and that it's out of the way. That is so important. I've been in so many frustrating situations where I just got ahead of myself and I cut a hole in my fabric and it's just not a fun situation. And if you're sewing with a seam allowance that is less than half an inch, so say it's a quarter of an inch or less like an eighth, then I would recommend just turning that knife position off. So you don't even have to worry about just too much fabric coming off. A big question that I had personally when I first started using a serger is do I have to sew a side seam first with my regular machine? Doesn't this just kind of take over? Well, the answer that I have found is yes and no. For stretchy knit fabrics that are wanting to stretch, so if you're sewing a t-shirt or some baby bloomers out of a knit fabric, then I would recommend just going to the serger if these are more simple things to sew, you can just take it to a serger. It's going to create that, that stitch that's going to allow for stretch anyways. So it's kind of set up for the perfect opportunity to just serge it right away. But if you're constructing like a dress or some pants out of a woven fabric, like the Betty dress or anything like our patterns, then I would recommend sewing it first. There's a few reasons. It's one, just serging can kind of get ahead of yourself and you can miss a lot of the details of edges and sewing just the perfect parts together. And so that's where a sewing machine is really methodical and you can take your time as you're pulling out the pins. It 
it's just a little bit easier and you're gonna create that um, finished seam at first and then you can take it to the serger to prevent fraying. If you kind of skip the first part and went straight to the serger, there's the opportunity for that woven fabric to get kind of looser and looser, break up, and then it doesn't have that support system of the first seam where it can come undone easily. So I recommend just looking at your project of the fabric that you're using and kind of weighing the options if you need to sew it before serging. But nine times out of 10, I would always sew it beforehand and then finish off the seams with a nice serged edge. Another big question is why are my stitches wonky? They're not turning out. It looks like just knots are happening and my edges are just not coming together. And I think the main reason with this is always the threading always goes back to the threading. If I'm having trouble with my machine, maybe I haven't cleaned it in a while, I'll take all the threads off, clean it out, which we'll talk about later, and just make sure that the threads are not knotted or there's no um, fraying to the threads. And then I'll re-thread the machine going step by step, making sure everything is in the perfect position. Once that is in place, I'll double check all of my tensions and my settings on the side. And that's usually where I'll find maybe the missing piece. Maybe one thing is out of place. That's why threading is so important. And a few best practices for having a serger is to always keep it clean, always vacuum it. Um, when you're vacuuming, just be careful. The threads can kind of get sucked into there. So you might want to move those out of the way, kind of take your vacuum into the crevices and get it cleaned out. Um, and just make sure it's clean of dust and debris. Uh, the fabric really does pile up and especially when you're cutting it and all of the threads and stuff kind of get caught in to your machine. So cleaning it after every use is going to just keep it working in tip top shape. I would just make sure that you're not using too thick of fabric on this machine. Since this is probably the baseline serger, it's probably right now the cheapest on the market, it's most accessible. I would not use anything thicker than a denim. If you are using something thick like a canvas denim or thicker, then I would just serge one layer at a time and then sew it together. So that way you're just not getting caught up into um, breaking needles or the stitches kind of getting messed up because that your fabric is too thick. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing this machine. If you're wanting to do thicker fabrics, then maybe look into other models. I hope this video gave you a good overview of the Brother 1034D. If you have any questions or tips for me, I'd love to hear them in the comments. And I know there's so much you can do with this machine, so I'd love to hear from you. And if you want some more beginner tutorials and sewing guides, you can click this next video.